Hi, this is Erika Kasab from Small Robot Studio. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of sculpting and posing a hand in Nomad Sculpt. I'll show you some notes and references with average proportions on the side as we sculpt, so you can break down any reference and find the uniqueness of each person. On a new project, set your camera to orthographic. We will start by blocking the palm with a sphere in low resolution. We will shape it like a box, slightly taller than wider, and with its bottom thinner than the top. Adding some resolution at the top where the fingers attach, with the project tool I'm gonna create a slide roughly at 45 degrees. When you compare both sides of the palm, the inside seems taller. That's the reason of the slice we just made. The palm isn't a flat box. It rises in the back, creating a tunnel on the inside which I'll create by masking the center, reversing and blurring this mask, to then pull it with the gizmo. This cavity is a space for tendons known as carpal tunnel. Yes, this is the same carpal tunnel so many artists suffer from. The top of the palm isn't straight either. It follows an asymmetrical curve, taller at the height of the middle finger. Make sure you deactivate symmetry for this and the next stages. Hey, make sure that you are subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you might be missing out on the many tutorials that we release for free each week here on YouTube. We don't want to create just a floating hand, so I'm gonna create a section of the forearm. We will simplify it with a cylinder. The end that connects to the hand is thinner and boxier. Feel it on your arm. Closer to the elbow, it's squishy and round. Towards the wrist, the top and bottom are pretty much flat. Let's create a long cylinder. In the topology section, uncheck constant density and give the y-axis only three divisions. We'll start with the middle finger. Just so you know, I'm not being cheeky by choosing this particular finger. The thing is that from the knuckle to the tip, it's roughly the same distance as the height of the palm, so it's a good reference. Before I validate this cylinder, I'll modify its base to be wider because the fingers taper on the top. I'll add subdivision levels and with the paint tool I'll mark the half of the finger. This is where the first joint is located. Make another half division on the top for the next joint. Let's do yet another half division at the top phalange for the origin of the nail. Take in consideration that these are not exact measurements, we're just gonna take this paint as a point of reference. The back of the fingers is flatter, so I'm gonna mask these faces and with the gizmo flatten down a little bit. To obtain the roundness of the tip, I'll use a smooth tool in relax mode, from the opposite side creating a round slope. I'll change the pivot of the gizmo to the tip and duplicate these cylinders to create the other fingers. The index finger will align to the origin of the middle finger's nail. The ring finger is shorter than the middle, lining up somewhere around the middle of the nail. The little finger will reach the joint of the ring finger. For the thumb, I'll just set a copy aside for now. Their attachment follows the shape of the palm, not a straight line. Actually, the fingers are not straight either. They have a natural curvature towards the middle, which I'll make with the move tool. I'll select one finger and set it to solo mode. With the slice tool, I'll divide it into its three phalanges. From a side view, I'll pull out the belly with the move tool. Repeat the same process for each finger. You might be familiar with workflows where each finger is an individual geometry and no slicing is done. There is no right or wrong. The reason behind the slicing is to make posing easier, since Nomad doesn't have sophisticated posing tools like other softwares. Let's work on the thumb. Move the gizmo pivot to the base. The thumb starts at the bottom corner of the palm. In the neutral position, it's rotated around 45 degrees to the side and down. Its orientation is different to the other fingers. Place your thumb next to the palm and see. It's roughly a 90 degree rotation, so we'll do that rotation by setting our gizmo to local and the slider to 90 degrees. If we follow the curve of the first joint of the other fingers, we reach the top of the thumb. So adjust its size and thickness of course. The measurements for its phalanges are different. In the middle, we'll find the first joint, create another half and the next joint is just slightly higher than that. 
That's right, the thumb only has two phalanges. The bottom one is actually a metacarpus with outstanding movement. The metacarpus is covered by a teardrop-shaped muscle on the palm side. With a low-resolution sphere and the move tool, I'll block this shape. The belly of the muscle attaches in the middle at the height of the middle finger. Before anything else, change your camera to perspective. And let's work on the palm with more detail. Let's add multi-resolution levels. On the thumb side from the back, I will mask the bottom three quarters and pull out another teardrop shape overlapping from the back the previous muscle we made. On the side of the little finger, there's another muscle, thin at the top and round at the bottom. It makes the side of the palm round. Unlike the thumb muscle, this one doesn't attach to the center of the palm. There is a gap between the two. With the crease tool, I'll block the main folds of the inside of the hand. I'll also build up some of the visible bumps, like the fat pads of the palm, the knuckles or the tendons at the back of the fingers that converge at the start of the wrist. Don't go into crazy detail, because these volumes and depressions will change according to the pose. We have all the pieces, so let's pose this hand. Make sure that you save a copy of this stage. You might want it as a base hand for other poses or characters. Of course, our Patreon supporters can access my base file, every other step of the process, and a PDF guide with all the measurements we just reviewed. Become a supporter in patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio or buy the individual assets in our Gumroad store. To move a finger, you need to move the palm. Try it. If you hold your palm, you can only flex two phalanges instead of a whole finger. The palm is actually flexible on three of its four corners. The folds we made in the palm show us their area of influence. Most flexibility comes from the thumb, then the little finger, and finally the index. Bringing your palm to low resolution, let's use masks and the move tool to modify its shape according to how you plan to pose your fingers. Now, use multi-select by holding down smooth to select the different parts of the finger. Choose the gizmo and place a pivot on the knuckle. Now move and rotate your fingers. Now select the top two phalanges, move the pivot again, rotate, and so on with the last phalange. You will have to make rough adjustments of areas bulging out or being stretched. Use your own hands as reference. Once it's all in place, select all the geometries and voxel merge. Unify your shapes and define with more detail the creases and bumps. I will not go into more detail because that's material for another video, but I'll take a moment for nails. Make a cylinder, flatten it a little in one axis and mask one of the flattened sides. Then extract the shell using the mask settings. You'll want some softness and low thickness. Place the nail slightly buried under a fingertip and carve the finger to reveal the shape. Enhance the shape by modifying both the nail and the finger. If you plan to merge them, make sure you voxel in high resolution. Alright, here we go! Let me know in the comments what you want me to sculpt next. See you soon and happy sculpting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.